our next topic is gram schmidt orthogonalization process gram schmidt orthogonalization process and what is this this is the process to convert to convert a set in into a normal uh, into a orthogonal set into a orthogonal set so you have a set for example three elements are given you want to change the set into a new set so that the new three elements of the set are orthogonal okay so this is your this is your topic and in the same way you have gram schmidt ortho normalization process also and this thing should be very this thing should be very clear to you see what is this when you have orthogonalization process then you want to convert a set to orthogonal set fine first step you do the orthogonalization second step when you have a orthogonal set sorry when you have orthogonal set then whatever elements you have you divide those elements by their norms and that set will remain orthogonal at the same time it will be normal also so when you have gram schmidt orthogonalization then you have to convert into orthogonal set when you have ortho normalization then you in the first go you have to make the set orthogonal and when you have orthogonal set then you convert that into a normal set also and it is very easy to convert any vector into a unit vector because you have to divide by the norm only okay so two thing these are two things but actually it is only one thing now this is a, this is a algorithm process means algorithm algorithm you can say it is a theorem also the whatever the theorem is is the process of numerical also so even if i am writing a theorem indirectly i am doing the process for the numericals now one thing is uh, one lemma that we need in this theorem this is lemma is um if a set is linearly dependent if a set is linearly dependent then then one element of the set then one element of set can be written as can be written as linear combination of other elements linear combination of other elements can be written as linear combination of other elements so you say that you have v1 v2 up to so on vn is linearly dependent and this same theorem is converse is also true it is if and only if. is linearly independent if and only if vk is linear combination of if and only if vk is linear combination of v1 to vk minus 1 vk plus 1 to vn for some for some k means one element some element will be written as linear combination of the other element so this is a lemma we will use this then we will do the theorem now now theorem is statement of this process says that any linearly independent set can be converted can be converted into a into a orthogonal set okay any any linearly independent set can be converted into a orthogonal set okay so why we are taking or uh, why we are taking linearly independent set only because we know that 
when we are find see you have given a set and you want to convert that set into orthogonal set and orthogonal set cannot be linearly dependent for example if this set is having 10 elements for example this set is having 10 elements and this set is linearly dependent when you will start this process then for example out of these 10 elements eight are linearly independent and two elements are dependent on the rest of the eight elements when you will apply this process then during the course of uh, this process or algorithm two elements will automatically become zero and you will be having only eight non zero elements those eight element will be orthogonal elements and the set will be orthogonal set because you have done a theorem that a orthogonal set will always be taking non zero elements only so we know that when we are having linearly dependent set some elements will be written as linear combination of the other and the orthogonal set cannot be linearly dependent so instead of taking any set we take a set which is already linearly independent so that in the course of this process no element becomes zero okay so this is our reason for taking linearly independent set now uh you can say proof or the proceeding we should not say that it is a proof it is proceeding of this how this method or process or algorithm follows so you say let let v1 v2 up to so on vn be a linearly independent set of ips vf fine you take a linearly independent set you want to convert this set into a new set which is orthogonal set so you say that consider consider new elements now we are going to make a new set how we make consider u1 is equal to v1 first element remains the same then second element second element is u2 what is u2 u2 is v2 minus v2 comma u1 divided by u1 norm square and then u1 then u3 is carefully u3 is v3 minus v3 comma u1 then u1 norm square then u1 minus v3 u2 and then u2 norm square and then u2 you should understand what is happening you have these elements v1 v2 up to so on v n first of all now first element remain the same this is u1 second element is v2 we want to convert this v2 into a new element u2 this u2 will have effect of this u2 will please listen to this very carefully this u2 will have effect of v2 as well as v1 okay instead of using v1 we are using u1 so this is this is called cumulative process u2 when you are defining u2 you are taking care of the fact that you will manage this v2 with this u1 in such a way that this u1 and u2 become orthogonal to each other then you have new element v3 you make this element u3 when you will define u3 this u3 will obviously be having v3 and you will take u1 and u2 both in such a way that when you take inner product of v3 with u1 and u2 it becomes a zero so this is the main idea of this process now one thing is first element is as it is v1 is u1 is v1 second element we define in this way fine when we define this we have to say two things one is u2 comma u1 u2 comma u1 when you take u2 comma u1 it will become u2 
sorry v2 minus this thing minus this thing i say this is ku1 for one second ku1 and comma u1 i hope this thing is clear to you then you have v2 comma u1 fine minus k u1 comma u1 k u1 comma u1 is u1 norm square and k is this thing v2 comma u1 and then divided by u1 norm square and then u1 norm square and then v2 comma u1 you see this thing this thing everything they will cancel each other this will be equal to zero what i'm trying to say is u1 and u2 are orthogonal with respect to each other fine now next is when you have defined this element u2 it may happen that u2 becomes zero if it becomes zero then gone because orthogonal set should not be having any zero and so you say if if u2 is equal to zero implies v2 minus ku1 is equal to zero implies v2 is equal to k v1 because u1 is v1 implies c r lemma lemma says if elements are linearly dependent then one element can be written as the linear combination of the other elements implies v1 comma v2 are linearly dependent which is not true which is not true therefore therefore u2 is non zero i hope you understand the utility of this step first is this is u1 fine you define u2 fine you define u2 comma u1 fine you define u2 comma u1 norm sorry inner product and this inner product is equal to zero they are orthogonal with respect to each other we want orthogonal orthogonality then you have then you need to check that in the course of this step it may happen that the element becomes zero if element becomes zero then v1 and v2 will be dependent which is not true so this u2 should be non zero fine now you in the same way in the same way we define in the same way we define u3 continuing so on continuing so on we define okay continuing so on we define uk is equal to vk minus summation carefully i from 1 to k minus 1 then this is vk comma u i divided by u i norm square and then u i again okay so this is our step this is our step again this element will be linearly independent sorry this element will be non zero and it will be orthogonal to all elements v1 u1 u2 up to so on uk okay so now in this way this is your algorithm as well as this is a theorem you can say that if you need to prove this theorem i have explained this in the form of a algorithm in the form of theorem if you write then you say that for k we suppose it to be true it to be true then for k plus 1 you write one more step then you do one more step then you say it is true for k is equal to 1 therefore the principle of mathematical induction result is always true okay this is also one thing we can do that thing okay in the if we want to write in the form of theorem okay so this is your 
ग्राम शिमिट ऑर्थोगनलाइजेशन प्रोसेस नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज न्यूमेरिकल्स बेस्ड ऑन दिस प्रोसेस ओके